Hey everyone, welcome back. You want to know more about the business behind reggae music? Always a fascinating topic. Well, today, uh, world of publishing. Right. Using a special edition of Reggaeology as our guide. It's for serious reggae fans. Yeah, and this one focuses on publishing rights. Mm -hmm. And, you know, this deep dive, it isn't just for musicians, though. Right. It's for really any type of artist, you know, yeah. who yeah. wants to learn how to protect their creative work and yeah. build a lasting legacy. It's a fascinating look at how what you create now right. can have ripple effects for years to come. Yeah. Reggaeology uses the contrasting stories of two giants of reggae. Okay. Bob Marley and Dennis Brown to yeah. illustrate this point. Okay, so both Marley and Brown are legends, but their financial stories are very different. Right. What would happen? Well, I'll Bob Marley, despite his untimely passing, right set up his publishing rights incredibly well. His estate is still generating significant income decades later. Wow. Thanks to carefully structured agreements. Marley's music is everywhere still. Correct. From movies to commercials. Yeah. Every time I hear that, every little thing riffers. Mm -hmm. Someone's getting paid. Someone is. But what about Dennis Brown? Right. I mean, his music's just as impactful, isn't it? Absolutely. Brown's catalog is immense. Yeah. And influential. Yeah. Unfortunately, he wasn't as savvy with his publishing. Okay. So the financial rewards haven't matched his artistic impact. So this whole publishing thing, it's not just boring paperwork. Thank it's you. about setting yourself and your family up for the future. It is. It's about creating generational wealth. The newsletter has a great analogy. Oh, yeah. Comparing publishing to building a house. <sighs> That's one of the things I love about Regiology's take on this. Yeah. They say your IPI number. Okay. Which identifies you as a songwriter. Uh-huh. Is like the title deed to your land. Oh, okay. ISRC codes, which are used to track each individual recording, are like building permits. Okay. And then the split sheets and producer agreements. Yeah. Those are your blueprints. Okay. I'm starting to get the picture. Good. So just like you wouldn't build a house without those plans. Right. You need these elements in place for a strong music career. You do? I know plenty of artists who just register with a performance rights organization or PRO. I was going to say. Was that enough? It's a common misconception. Yeah. And regiology tackles it head on. Oh, good. They say that just signing up with a PRO is like planting a seed. Uh-huh. But never tending to the garden. Okay. To actually see the fruits of your labor. Right. You need to manage and track your music actively. So it's about being proactive. Yes. Not just assuming that the royalties will magically appear in your bank account. Exactly. But what does managing your music actually look like? Well, let's take an example. Okay. Imagine you've written a song. Okay. And it's going to be recorded by an artist. Mm -hmm. Before anyone hits the studio. Yeah. You need a split sheet. Okay. This document outlines who owns what percentage of the song's rights. I see. If there are three songwriters, yeah. maybe they split it evenly. Okay. Or maybe one person wrote the melody and gets a larger share. So that's where the potential for conflict comes in. Exactly. What if everyone thinks they deserve the biggest cut? That's why it's so important to have these conversations early on. Yeah. Regiology suggests having an attorney look over your contracts. Okay. Especially if you're unsure about certain clauses. That makes sense. A small investment up front can save you from major headaches down the line. That's good practical advice. Yeah. But you know, when I think about reggae, I think about those classic rhythms right? used by multiple artists. Mm -hmm. How does that work with publishing? That's where things get even more interesting. Okay. And it ties into what the newsletter calls the Hagler system. Okay. A system unique to Jamaica's music scene. Oh, it just... The newsletter describes it as a double-edged sword. Okay. Integral okay. to the history of reggae, mm -hmm. but also potentially harmful to artists. Okay. I'm, I'm curious to unpack this Hagler system. Right. How does it actually work? Well, imagine you're a young artist in Jamaica. Okay. With a hot new song. Yeah. A producer might offer you a quick cash advance for the rights to your music. Oh. It seems like a great deal at the time. Yeah. Especially if you're struggling financially. That quick cash can be tempting for sure. It can. But it sounds like there's a catch. There often is. Oh, no. You might get a few hundred dollars up front. Right. But the producer now owns the rights to your song. Oh, wow. And all the future income it generates. So you're trading long-term potential for short-term gain. You are. That's a tough choice to make. It is. Especially for someone just starting out. Exactly. And that's why radiology spends so much time discussing this system. Okay. They argue that it's led to many older artists struggling financially, oh. despite having created incredibly successful music. That doesn't seem fair. Think about it. 
A song could be sampled in a huge international hit years later. Right. And the original artist might never see a dime. This haggler system makes me think about how important it is for artists. It is. Not just in reggae, mm -hmm. but across all genres. Yeah. To understand their rights and the value of their work. Absolutely. Are there any real world examples of artists who've maybe been burned by this system? Reggaeology talks about Sugar Minot. Okay. A pioneer of dance hall music. Yeah. He was incredibly prolific, uh -huh. creating countless rhythms and hits. Wow. But due to unfavorable publishing deals, yeah. he didn't always reap the financial rewards he deserved. That's so disheartening. It is. It really highlights the importance of having a solid understanding of the business side of music, even yeah. if you're a creative genius. It's a balance for sure. Right. You need the passion and talent to create the music, mm -hmm. but you also need the knowledge and savvy to mm -hmm. protect it. Yeah. And that's where our conversation goes next into the digital age okay, and how it's reshaping the landscape of publishing. I'm really curious to hear more about that. Yeah. We've got so much ground to cover. We do. So we were just talking about how the digital age has changed everything for musicians. It really has. But has it made things easier when it comes to publishing? That's a good question. It seems like everyone can record and release music now. Yeah, it's definitely a more complex landscape. Yeah. I mean, it's easier than ever to create and share your music right which is amazing yeah but it also means there's more competition than ever right and navigating this digital world yeah requires a different set of skills so how does an artist stand out uh. in this crowded digital space yeah. is it just about going viral on tiktok well while going viral can help yeah it's not a sustainable strategy in the long run what? building a lasting career takes more than just fleeting online fame okay so what's the secret sauce yeah. What should up-and-coming artists, especially in the reggae world, be focusing on? One thing that hasn't changed is the importance of building a solid team. Oh. Uh -huh. Reggaeology stresses finding a good publishing administrator. Right. Who can be your advocate in this new landscape. Okay. Someone who understands both the traditional music industry right. and the complexities of digital distribution. It's interesting that they keep coming back to the need for a publishing administrator. It is. What exactly does a publishing administrator do? Okay. And how can you find one? Okay. Think of them as your representative in the world of publishing. Okay. They will register your copyrights. Okay. Negotiate deals with streaming services. Uh-huh. Collect your royalties. Yeah. And make sure you're getting paid what you're owed. Okay. As for finding one. Yeah. Word of mouth is often the best way. Word of mouth, yeah. Talk to other artists, producers, and songwriters in your network. Okay. See who they trust and recommend. It's all about who you know. It is. Even in the digital age. It's true. But let's talk about those digital platforms. Okay. Streaming is how most people consume music now. It is. Is that actually a good thing for artists? That's a good question. Or are they getting the short end of the stick when it comes to royalties? That's a question a lot of musicians are grappling with. Yeah. Um, Regiology cites a study that shows how artists are receiving a smaller percentage okay. of the revenue generated from streaming compared to physical sales Right. back in the day. Yeah. It's a complex issue with no easy answers. That's really troubling. It is. It seems like the platforms are making all the money right. while the artists who create the music are struggling to get by. Yeah. Are there any solutions on the horizon? Well, some organizations are fighting for fairer streaming royalties. Okay. And greater transparency from the platforms. Okay. But it's an uphill battle for sure. Yeah. You know, we've been talking about how important it is to protect your music. Yes. From being exploited. Mm -hmm. But what about the flip side? Okay. Sampling is a huge part of reggae and dance hall. It is. How does an artist clear a sample and use it legally? That's a great question. Yeah. And it highlights how publishing and copyright intersect. Okay. Regiology actually has a whole section on sample clearance. Oh, wow. Basically, if you want to use a piece of someone else's music in your own work, mm -hmm. you need to get permission from the copyright holder, right. which is usually the publisher. Okay. And this often involves negotiating a fee okay. or a percentage of the royalties. That makes sense. Yeah. You can't just take someone else's creative work and profit from it without their consent. Right. But I imagine that clearing samples can get pretty expensive. It can. Especially for a genre like reggae where sampling is so prevalent. It can definitely be a challenge. Yeah. Sometimes the rights holders are hard to track down. Or they might demand a price that's out of reach for a smaller artist. 
It seems like every aspect of this publishing world is a balancing act. It is. You've got to be protective of your own work, mm. but also respectful of the work of others. Absolutely. It's about finding that sweet spot right. where creativity and commerce can coexist harmoniously. This brings us back to that powerful quote from the newsletter Yeah. about creating a legacy that could feed your grandchildren. Right. How can thinking about publishing in these terms yeah. as building something that lasts mm -hmm. change an artist approach to their career? I think it encourages a long-term vision. Yeah. It's not just about chasing the next hit right. or getting that quick cash payout. Right. It's about making strategic decisions that will benefit you and your family for years to come. It's like planting a tree whose shade you might not get to enjoy. Yeah. But, you know, it will provide for generations to come. I like that. What would you say to an artist who's maybe feeling overwhelmed by all of this? Take it one step at a time. Okay. Start by learning the basics of copyright and publishing. Okay. Don't be afraid to ask questions and seek out advice from those who have more experience. Mm. There are resources available to help you navigate this complex world. That's reassuring to hear. Yeah. And what about the Hagler system? Right. Is it destined to disappear in the digital age? Mm. Or will it continue to be a part of the Jamaican music scene? That's a tough one to predict. Yeah. The system has its roots in Jamaica's unique cultural and economic history. Right. But the rise of digital platforms is definitely changing the game. Yeah. yeah. Only time will tell how it all evolves. I can't wait to see how things unfold. Me too. This entire deep dive has really opened my eyes to the complexities and challenges yes. faced by reggae artists. It is a lot. And the importance of understanding publishing, mm -hmm. regardless of your creative field. Absolutely. Yeah. I'm glad to hear that. Yeah. Knowledge is power. <laughs> and hopefully this conversation has empowered you to take control of your creative journey. For sure. So we've covered a lot of ground in our deep dive into reggae and the business of music. Yeah. A lot to think about. I'm curious, what are some of the biggest misconceptions you encounter when talking to artists about publishing? Oh, that's a good question. Um, I'd say one of the biggest is that publishing is only for big name stars. Yes. Right. Or those signed to major labels. Yeah. The truth is, every artist who creates original work needs to understand these concepts. I've definitely heard that before. Yeah. Like, oh, I'm just a small time musician. I don't need to worry about all that legal stuff. Right, exactly. But as we've seen, protecting your rights from the beginning can make a huge difference down the line. Absolutely huge. Yeah. Another misconception is that publishing is all about money. Oh, okay. While it's certainly important to be compensated fairly for your work, right. it's also about control. Hmm. Who gets to use your music? Right. How is it presented to the world. Yeah. These are questions that every artist should be asking themselves. It's about having agency over your art. It is. Not just letting it float around in the ether. Exactly. So what's one actionable step a musician listening right now can take, no. regardless of their experience level? I would say the first step is to educate yourself. Okay. There are so many resources available online. Yeah. From articles and videos to organizations dedicated to supporting artists' rights. Not oh, cool. Knowledge is power, right? Always. The more you understand, the better equipped you'll be to navigate the industry and make informed decisions. Uh, yeah. Don't be afraid to reach out to other musicians and industry professionals. Absolutely. Ask questions, share experiences, and learn from each other. That's how it's done. Yeah. There's a real sense of community in the reggae world, and people are often willing to help. We've talked a lot about the challenges faced by reggae artists, but let's end on a positive note. Okay, I like it. What are some of the exciting things happening in reggae right now that give you hope for the future? Well, there's a new generation of artists emerging. Okay. Who are incredibly savvy about the business side of music. Oh, that's good. They're using digital platforms to their advantage, mm -hmm. building their own brands. Right. And connecting directly with fans worldwide. That's great. It's an exciting time to be involved in reggae. It sounds like the spirit of independence and innovation yeah. that has always been at the heart of reggae is alive and well. Absolutely. Reggae has always been about more than just music. Right. It's a culture, a movement, a way of life. Yeah. And I believe that as long as artists continue to create and innovate, reggae will continue to thrive. I love that sentiment. Yeah. We've only scratched the surface of this topic today, but hopefully this deep dive has given our listeners a better understanding of the ah. world of publishing and inspired them to think more deeply about their own creative journeys. For sure.
That's a powerful message to end on. It is. And to our listeners, keep those creative fires burning, and we'll see you next time. Yes.